Just like historical dynasties that eventually collapse and get replaced by new ones, Boeing is experiencing a similar fate, with its golden era now just a thing of the past. Looking back seven years ago in 2017, Boeing's then CEO, Dennis Muhlenberg, told Jim Cramer, host of CNBC's program, that eventually we're going to Mars and I firmly believe the first person to set foot on Mars will get there on a Boeing rocket. Elon responded to the comment on X and said, do it. Boeing accepted the challenge, responding to the rival CEO with a short game on. If it were back then, any of us would have thought that Boeing would definitely beat out SpaceX, not to mention landing on Mars, even with their achievements in space and Boeing's pride in their past successes, like their participation in the historic Apollo program and their construction of some modules on the space station, Boeing was very confident in their strong capabilities. But surprisingly, in just a short period, Boeing has gone from being a well-performing company to one that can't stop making mistakes in every aspect. On the other hand, as of now, SpaceX is the clear winner. They are the world's leading provider of rocket launch services. With rockets that land themselves on autonomous drone ships, their own astronauts, their crew vehicle, and the Starship under development, SpaceX is eons of miles ahead. For the past four years, the Dragon spacecraft has been the only vehicle to transport astronauts to and from ISS. An even bigger advantage is that Dragon got assigned to resupply cargo back in 2012. Moreover, SpaceX's Dragon is now considered a solution to save Boeing's Starliner project. This not only prevents the old giant Boeing from getting out of the mud, but also deals a severe blow to the morale of the company's whole staff. Boeing's employees have been humiliated after NASA's decision regarding Starliner. We've had so many embarrassments lately. We're under a microscope, one Boeing worker said, speaking under the condition of anonymity. This made it like 100 times worse. We hate SpaceX, he added. We talk smack about them all the time, and now they're bailing us out. In the spirit of a rapid decline, this worker stated that many people at Boeing are blaming NASA for this humiliation. They have their own PR issues and don't need two dead astronauts, he said. But we didn't think that there would be dead astronauts. We'd never have recommended they, they use that if they thought that was going to be unsafe for them. Elon also commented on this. Arguably a natural turn of events, just as the car companies did not dominate the medium of air, they tried, the aircraft companies will not dominate the medium of space. So not only does this affirm that changes in the space industry are natural, but it also seems that Elon feels the need to remind Boeing's employees and everyone else that each new field is going to get led by specialized companies, not the old school giants who succeeded in previous fields. This means that even though SpaceX is a newer player compared to Boeing, which has decades of experience, SpaceX certainly creates major breakthroughs in the market, potentially surpassing all other companies. Furthermore, Elon expressed a more positive outlook on Boeing's struggles. The new Boeing CEO is spending time in the factories. That's the right thing to do, Elon said. The new CEO of Boeing, Kelly Ortberg, took the reins of the company from Dave Calhoun earlier this month. In reality, from the perspective of this CEO, making decisions regarding the Starliner program is quite challenging. Boeing is facing a dilemma, balancing its national obligations with the strain on its cash reserves. After weeks of testing and heated debate, the space agency decided using SpaceX was safer. The specter of NASA astronauts being stuck in space is just one embarrassing moment of many for Boeing during an epically bad year that's included a near-catastrophic blowout of a 737, federal investigations, and an executive suite shakeup. That leaves Ortberg, who took over the top job earlier this month, and the senior leadership known internally as Exco, to face thorny questions about the company's commitment to human spaceflight and Starliner. Before Ortberg joined Boeing, executives had vowed to honor the company's contract to ferry astronauts to the ISS for NASA. Bill Nelson, NASA's top leader, said Ortberg recently voiced support for continuing Starliner program after the craft sent back from the space station without the people on board. He expressed to me an intention that they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and that we'll have a redundancy in our crewed access to the space station, the NASA admin said. But as a new leader brought in to get Boeing back on track after years of turmoil, Orberg has free reign to make sweeping changes in some unpopular calls, including potentially scuttling the human spaceflight initiative. Do they ultimately exit the program because it's too complicated? Boeing can't recover its investment and because the other guy can do it better, said Robert Springarn, an analyst with Melius Research. It can happen. Much is going to depend on how Starliner performs during its return flight to Earth without the astronauts on board next month. 
NASA's not ruled out certifying the Boeing craft, although it could require another test flight before the capsule is allowed to carry astronauts again. That could cost Boeing about $400 million based on charges the company booked to redo an earlier test flight. The agency's experts are still not certain why thrusters certainly stopped working. So, how many crew transfer flights does NASA plan to carry out using Boeing Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon before they end ISS operations? And when will NASA admit that maintaining two companies to provide astronaut transportation services is no longer necessary? Since it was determined that astronauts should not stay in zero gravity for more than six months to avoid long-term health issues, there are now four crew transfers to the ISS each year, two by Russia and two by NASA. NASA often flies astronauts from other companies, so it's not always for Americans. The Soyuz rocket can carry three astronauts, while SpaceX's Dragon and Starliner can carry four. This arrangement means the ISS typically has a permanent crew of seven. During crew changeovers, there is usually an overlap of a few days, bringing the total number of people on board to as many as 11. Occasionally, space tourists have also visited the ISS, which can temporarily increase the crew size to 11 for a week or so. The ISS is currently scheduled to be deorbited in 2030. As of third quarter this year, a NASA crew exchange is in progress. Here's the projected schedule for the next couple years. First quarter of next year, Russian crew exchange. Second quarter of next year, NASA crew exchange. This pattern continues with two NASA flights and two Russian flights every year through 2029 and possibly one more in 2030. This means there could be about 10 or 11 more NASA flights and a similar number of Russian flights before ISS gets deorbited. Under the commercial crew program, both Boeing and SpaceX were each contracted for six full crew transfers, and those contracts have already been paid out. SpaceX has since secured more contracts because they have to fly missions that Boeing was originally supposed to handle. Looking forward, there are four possible scenarios. One, Boeing completes their six missions and their contract gets extended for more flights. Two, Boeing completes their six contracted missions and SpaceX handles the last four or five. Three, Boeing's flights are canceled, the money to pay to them is written off, and SpaceX does all the 10 or 11 missions. Four, NASA decides to delay the scrapping of ISS, changing out the entire situation. Of these scenarios, it's incredibly likely that Boeing's contract is going to get renewed after six missions. Boeing's cost per mission is twice that of SpaceX, and they likely could not manage launches every six months due to their slower cadence. NASA might be forced to let Boeing fly their six contracted missions simply because canceling would be a waste of tax dollars. However, this is also unlikely if Boeing doesn't fix their ongoing issue with Starliner soon. SpaceX is going to continue to cover Boeing's missions as they're currently doing, making it inevitable that Boeing is not going to do all six missions. There are also other potential complications as well. Russia suggested that they might abandon their section of the ISS before the end of the decade, which would leave the station undermanned for maintenance and research. If Russia pulls out early, NASA might need to increase its crew launches to fill the gap. Overall, the outcome of Starliner is well-deserved. They shouldn't blame anyone, not even NASA, because NASA has been more than favorable to them through now. Nowadays, NASA usually puts most of its requests for proposals for competitive bidding, creating a new environment where emerging private companies now have the opportunity to compete on equal footing with these traditional big dogs. And this raises the question, why are companies like Boeing struggling with fixed-price contracts compared to the older cost-plus contracts? Proposals are evaluated based on both price and technical merit, and newer private companies seem to be doing well in both these areas. It could also be that older public companies are just overly bureaucratic and focused on short-term shareholder profits and executive bonuses. In Boeing's case, since their merger with McDonnell Douglas, perhaps the company's just led by too many MBAs and not enough engineers, leading to a prioritization of quick profits over actual quality. In high-stakes industries where failure is not an option, ensuring success is going to be more expensive if a company doesn't iterate its design process using quick, inexpensive testing. The modern agile design method, which involves failing fast and learning from mistakes, allows for some flexibility in planning. However, the traditional waterfall approach requires getting everything right the first time, making quality control critical. Otherwise, mistakes become a lot more expensive to fix later on. Listen, I'm not an industry insider. Recent quality control issues at Boeing and Lockheed Martin do come to mind. These include Boeing's plane crashes, missing door panels, wheels, and emergency slides falling off, not to mention software bugs, helium leaks, flammable wiring, and failing thrusters on the Starliner spacecraft. Similarly, Orion has faced problems like inaccessible batteries, fire safety concerns, and excessive charring. These issues seem to reflect a much broader problem with quality management. Anyhow, that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. Bye.